The Museum of the American Arts and Crafts Movement is the only museum in the world dedicated exclusively to the American Arts and Crafts Movement. And as they get ready to celebrate their one year anniversary with new exhibits, we invited them back on the show. And joining me now is Andrea Morgan, Director of Operations. Welcome, how are you? I'm great, thank you for having me. So again, we had you guys back a year ago when you were just getting ready to open. Mm -hmm. How's it going? It's going great. This past year has been wonderful. We have welcomed so many people from the community and had great exhibitions. And we're really looking forward to our second year. So people, until you kind of hear about this museum, maybe like, wait a second, there's a museum about crafts and a craft movement. Mm -hmm. Explain what it is about and why it is so significant. So the American Arts and Crafts Movement, we date it from about um, 1890 through about 1930. And this is a movement dedicated to the American Arts and Crafts Movement, which was a rebellion against against what came before it. Um, and this is particularly related to simplicity in design, handmade objects, and really the art of craft. So our museum is five stories, 137,000 square feet, dedicated to this movement. And what's exciting to me about it is that this is a distinctly American movement and the first one of its kind. So this is the first time that American artists were really creating something that was all their own. You know, we have a regular segment on the show where we talk with this antique appraiser who's able to break down everything under the sun and anything that deals with the craft category mm -hmm. typically does very well. Mm -hmm. So why do you think I feel like between, you know, things that people may own that may be of value to an entire museum, why do you think people are so drawn to crafts and the arts in this form? I think that people are drawn to it because these are not things that were fabricated for a museum. This wasn't a painting meant to be in a museum. These were things that were made for people to use. So um, we see this a lot in our museum. People walk through and they have really deep personal connections to the objects. So they might have lived with them themselves or it was in their grandparents' house. And so they can see these tables, these chairs, these vases, these lighting fixtures that they may have lived with. So I think that that connection is strong with people. Um, it's that it, these are utilitarian objects. We use them in our homes every day now. Um, these are just kind of from a little bit longer ago. Well, and of course, celebrating the one year. I know you've got some events planned around that. So what's mm -hmm. going on? Um, so we are opening two brand new exhibitions. Um, both of them are culled from our collection. So um, the collection of the Two Red Roses Foundation is what you'll find in our museum. Um, but even with as much space as we have, we can't mm -hmm. put it all on view at once. So we have two exhibitions that are opening in September. One of them is dedicated to Arthur Wesley Dow, and the other one is dedicated to our woodblock prints. And what exactly do you mean by woodblock prints? Something we'll recognize? So woodblock prints are uh, this fabulous category of works on paper where an artist would take a block of wood, carve into it, paint on it, and then um, pull the print from a piece of paper. So there's two ways you can do this. You can use one block um, and apply paint in different ways. And so you get color in lots of different places on the one block, or you can make many different blocks each block has one color, and then the artist would sort of apply the block and, and build up the color. So we have those two variations. Um, this is an exciting collection for us. It's a large collection. The exhibition will feature about 150 color oh, woodblock wow. prints. And the exciting thing is that at this time, uh, early 19th century, artists were really experimenting with the medium. It was sort of new to the US and people were kind of figuring out how to do it. Um, so we have a lot of artists who sort of make it their own. They're experimenting, um, they're trying new things. And so this really celebrates that ingenuity and experimentation. You know what, we're getting ready to close and we want to share the contact information. Of course, the website is on the bottom of the screen right now. And as we get ready to do that, do you have something that's a favorite, a favorite portion of the museum that if people are kind of on the fence, this is what you say on why you really need to attend? So for me, it's the tile collection. Um, when I first started with the museum and I started learning about the collection, um, I saved tile for last because I thought, well, I have tile in my kitchen and tile in my bathroom. <laughs> right. You know, we all live with it every day. Right. Um, and then when these objects started coming out of storage and, and we started putting them up in the museum, I remember being completely and utterly blown away by these tile. Uh, the way that the artists were able to render things in this medium that we have all over our homes, right. all over our, our lives, um, is really astounding to me. And the tile has 
every subject matter imaginable from animals to plants to ships to to all kinds of things and it really is my favorite place in the museum it's on the fourth floor and it's where i always take people and say you have to check out the tile collection wonderful well thank you so much andrea for being with us today we appreciate and again we want to put more information on our website as well and you can visit your website for tickets hours all of that good stuff too and don't forget that year celebration too is coming up on september 7th again if you want to check this out it's a live jazz concert go to their website as well